on that guys sorry about that so second second part of this video here that we've got these just a representation of the alpha world cities beta world cities and gamma world cities now essentially the opposite of a country that has a primate city is a city that or a country that follows what's known as rank size rule rather than having one city that's so enormously different than in size and population uh, than, or in population specifically than others we have a very organized fashion. Uh, and that is the end of this period, so I'm going to pause this so I can close the door. Alrighty, much quieter. Um, so rank size rule was, is a pattern of settlement. So it's not exactly a rule, but you can think of it as um, almost like a, a qualification. Does, does a country or a place meet rank size rule? And that states that the pattern of settlement in a country is such that this is going to sound a lot harder than it is then the nth largest settlement is 1 over n, the population of the next largest settlement. Let me, let's give an example, then we'll come right back here. This just means that if the largest city is 12 million people, then the second largest city will be half the size of that, which would be uh, 6 million people, because I need my arrow here, because the second largest city becomes the denominator. Half as large, 12, 6, right? If the third largest, if the largest city is 12 million, then this place that follows rank size rule would be the third largest, it would be one, oh geez, one third the size of, where did this go? Uh, there we go. One third the size, would you be four million? If the largest city, if the fourth largest city, if the city, if the largest city is 12 million, then the fourth largest city would be three million, or one fourth. So just a very, uh, some patterned distribution of the population in a given place. So let's go back here to the definition. This was developed by geographer George Ziff in 1949 um, to describe the size of the cities within a country. And what this really indicates to us, and I mentioned already that a primate city is going to basically suck up the resources of the country. Rank size rule is just a greater indication of even distribution of resources um, over space. And you can see that the U.S. Uh, for the most part follows this concept of rank size rule. And that means that, uh, here's another example here in New Zealand and Australia, you can see the cities generally follow that, um, that downward sloping graph, as you see here, the logarithmic graph, if you will. So we have uh, Jordan, United States, Indonesia, Iran, these are all following rank size rule. Now, I don't like to make these generalizations. I don't like to make generalizations because there are certainly exceptions across the board. On the whole, though, the rank size rule is because of the fact that it's, a dis it's an indication of the greater distribution of resources. Let's go back to what causes a primate city. We can infer then, there's a, a, we are able to better infer that this place perhaps wasn't the product of colonialism. Perhaps this place has greater industrial uh, distribution. It's not just all agglomerated or clustered in one particular place. We can see that the right the migrations may be happening on a smaller scale. There's not people moving on massive um, distances to move to a place. And we may also infer that there are better transportation systems available. So therefore, rank size rule can be an indication of a more developed country, whereas uh, primate cities can be an indication of a lesser developed country. Again, keeping in mind London and Paris is two extremely important examples of places of MDCs that do, in fact, have primate cities. Okay, that's it. Primate cities, ring size rule. Uh, here are your analysis questions, and go ahead and turn, uh, complete these now. Thanks.